Where is your friend? Sorry? Your friend. You two always travel together. I don't know. He's probably at home, I guess. He's very nice and he's very funny. Yeah, he is. Oh my God, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you too. <laughs> Let's not have to call HR today, okay? <laughs> well, listen, if there's anything you need, you let me know, okay? Thanks. I mean it, Tom. Sometimes bad things just happen. There's nothing we can do about that. I'll try to keep that in mind. Tom, hey, hey welcome George. back. Thanks. Good to see you. Yeah. Road to work, huh? Yeah. No, oh, good for you. That's great exercise, huh? Cardio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. Not much has changed since you've been out. You know this place. Yep. Linda just had a cataract removed. Oh, wow. Gross. Getting old is the worst. Oh, Jeff had his baby. Oh, really? Yeah, boy. Forgotten about that. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm so glad you're back. Sorry about what happened, man. Uh, thanks, Rami. That's nice of you to say. Yeah. Uh, nice bike. <laughs> Old school. Got it used. Yeah, yeah, we got a good one. <laughs> you might want to tuck your pants into your sock, though. Yeah, you ruin fewer pants that way. <laughs> Life hack. <laughs> good tip. Yeah. Thanks, Rami. Yeah, yeah. George, I really appreciate you keeping a place here for me. It means a lot. It's the least I could do. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. Roger is retiring. 
Oh, really? When? Well, today's his last day. We're having a thing for him before he leaves. Well, good for him. Yeah, it is. Not great for us, though. It's gonna be hard to replace. Well, I'm sure you'll find somebody. Roger's been emailing me all week about the party. He picked out these hats. Retirement fantasies. He's probably been thinking about this moment for years. This cake is really good. Hey, Rami, have any of your clients worked with a law firm, Bauer, Vincent? Parks and Smith. Uh, maybe. Well, why do you ask? I'm just curious. Uh, their name popped up on something I was looking into. Oh, uh, yeah, they do a lot of uh, corporate law. Got a big international division. Yeah, I actually mentioned them in my blog the other day. I wrote a post about uh, international shipping and... Customs. Yeah. You read my blog? I've had a lot of free time lately. Thanks for the party, Rachel. I, I really appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying it. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any big plans? Yes, actually. Uh, my wife and I just bought a little place in Connecticut. Our two boys are both working in New York now, and this way we'll get to spend more time with the grandkids. There's a pond for them to fish in and lots of room for them to run around in. Sounds really nice, Roger. Thanks. I'm so glad you're back, Tom. We really missed you around here. Thanks. You know, George is looking to promote someone to replace him. Yeah, he mentioned something about that. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking about it. I think I sort of have it locked up. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Great. Nice helmet. Thanks. You've been riding the train for very long? Uh, actually, no. I'm, I'm pretty new to it. You? Nah, not too long. I gotta say, I do not care for it. It's not too bad. It beats traffic. It's like a moving DMV. Just another place where people sit and ignore each other. If you hate it so much, why do you take the train? I don't know. Actually, that's not true. I do know. I kind of have to. Did you lose a bet or something? There's something. 
Take it easy. You too. Metro Center bound train. and June are looking pretty good when compared to this time last year, but that doesn't take into account a variety of other factors. Shipping rates are a little higher, but shipping efficiency is way up, which more than counterbalances that. Majority of our clients are actually shipping significantly less product than this time last year, but they're using our services quite a bit more. We're seeing a 17% increase in billing fees for the month of May, and as much as 21% for June. And the difference can be found in a backlog of orders. A lot of our manufacturers are actually expecting an uptick in activity in the next four to six months, and they're gearing up accordingly. Sounds good, Jeff. Thanks, everyone. Hey, you got a sec? Hey, George, what's up? Well, you know we're still looking to replace Roger. Yeah, yeah, how's that going? Fine, I guess. I'm really hoping to move somebody up. Promote from within. I think that's a great idea. Could be a real opportunity here for someone. Yeah, sounds like it. It could be a real opportunity for you. I, I thought Rami had that all locked up. I'd like to weigh my options some. I think you'd be good at it. Been here a long time. You worked your way up. You know I think the world of you. Uh, I appreciate it. I really do. Um, and I just got back, and I feel like I'm just settling in here, so... Maybe the timing isn't perfect, but it could be good for you. Could help you put some things behind you. Just think about it. I will. Thank you. That's very nice of you. You're not selfish, really. I'm just hoping you'll stick around for a while. <laughs> And when the windows are rolled up, you don't smell the garbage. You don't hear the trucks and the yelling. And the creepy guy with the face tattoos doesn't seem as close. I recently started taking the train to work, and uh, having a bike makes it easier. What made you start taking the train? I haven't been inside a car in four months. On purpose? I was in a car accident. That's pretty bad. Are you afraid to get back in a car? Something like that, I guess. What do you think will happen if you do? Anything can happen. You know, people are constantly making decisions throughout the day. Usually they're low stakes. You know, what shirt am I going to wear? Or what am I going to have for lunch? Right. But on the rare occasion, in the time it takes you to realize you've made a poor decision, 
Your life is some new, terrible, different life. Are you interested in getting back in a car? I don't know. I just don't want to feel like this anymore. You know where you are? You know how you got this way? What's your name? All right, we got you. Hey, man. Hey, it's you. Yeah. How's it going? It's fine. You see these guys over here? Yeah? They're together, right? Together? I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Look, they're standing in a pack. They're basically all wearing the same suit. It's like a uniform. Obviously, these guys know each other. OK. One of them went to the trouble of organizing some sort of, I don't know, office commuter situation. Right. And they're all just standing around looking at their phones. What should they be doing? Chatting. No <laughs> bantering. Giving a personal anecdote, but all they're doing is looking at videos of a guy getting tased. Or a cat with a bow tie. <laughs> sure. I don't know, maybe they don't know each other. Oh, come on, man. We established the suits. Yeah, I know, but one of them had the bright idea to take the train. And now they have to hang out with people that they're normally paid to hang out with. Where you work at the end of the day, how many people are you dying to hang out with more? Not many. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, look around, all right? Everybody's either got their headphones in or they're on their cell phone. They just want a little break, you know? A little time off before they have to go do whatever miserable task they have to do today. Well, they could be talking to each other, you know, being people, acting like humans. A lot of people on here you want to make friends with? Look, humans crave interaction. Standing around a crowd full of people just staring at your hand computer, that doesn't qualify. How about that guy? Want to be friends with that guy? Yeah. Hey, he looks nice. Probably checking his stocks. Or posting what he had for breakfast on his blog. I guarantee you most of these people just looking at porn. Early morning train porn. That's pretty terrible. I'm Aaron, by the way. John, nice to meet you. This is Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, Maya, what's up? So I finally got Clark's address. Oh, great, thank you. Yeah, wasn't easy. A lawyer always has a better lawyer than they are, and this Clark guy is no slouch. Bar Vincent Parks and Smith is a good get. But your lawyer can beat up his lawyer? My lawyer's pushing 70 and about to lose his foot to diabetes. He's not being anybody up, but he can take your house pretty easily. You got a pen? Yep, yeah, It's 1065 Edison Drive. So what do you want with his home address, anyway? Nothing weird. Well, now I definitely think it's something weird. It's not. Huh? Why, then? I just want to get a better sense of the guy, you know? Find out where he lives, what he's about. All right. Hey, did you get any more information on Belming International? Not yet. I'm still looking. OK, thanks. How are you doing? Everything OK? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. You know, I got to get back to work here, so I'm going to. OK, yeah, I'll see you soon. All right, thanks. The guy had a lawyer on the scene before the cops even showed up. And the first cop there botched the whole thing completely. He let the lawyer totally take over. Thank you. They can't prove whether he was drunk or high or whatever the fuck he was. He didn't even check to see if he were alive. The first thing he did was call his lawyer. Tom, this guy's gonna walk. Narcotics can make the time pass strangely. I was in the hospital for a while, and watching that little crappy TV they have, the one that's uh, somehow too loud and muffled at the same time. Watched a lot of Fantasy Island. How long were you in there? A month and a half. Then what did you do? Uh, you know, I went home, I watched more TV, messed around on the internet, you know, stalked people I used to know. Looking up pictures of degenerates I went to high school with. Checking in with the people at work, seeing how they were doing. How's work going? Fine. Same as it was before. 
What is it you do exactly? I work in logistics for manufacturing companies. So I move theoretical objects from one spreadsheet to the next. It's kind of like pills and television. My job makes the time pass strangely. Is that what you're doing? Passing time? That's what we're all doing. Now we look for something just interesting enough to keep our attention until it's time to eat or sleep. I don't think that's how most people would describe their lives. And most people aren't being honest. Work, TV, exercise, porn. We look for something to mildly struggle against until we get sleepy again. Hmm. So how is your mild struggle going? And that's the problem, because for a while there, I almost had it. I was happy. I was content with my life. Before the accident, I had just the right amount of angst for some slight motivation. And now? It's just after the accident, all the stuff I enjoyed, the stuff that defined me, it all seems so trivial now. Now I want to do something that holds some kind of meaning for me. Maybe you need to meet some new people. Let's find a hobby or a project, and then don't put so much on it. If you find something you enjoy doing, you'll find meaning. Hey, Rami, how's it going? Good, man. How are you, Tom? Good. Hey, uh, you ride a bike, right? Uh, yes, I ride a bike. Right. Uh, do you know of any riding groups around town? Yeah, yeah, riding groups are great. I'm, I'm in one. It's called the Night Riders. We ride around only at night. Get it? Night Riders? Yeah, I get it. We meet downtown every Wednesday, just right across the city. You should join us sometimes, see if you like it. That sounds pretty good. Great. Glad you made it, man. Yeah. Listen, I think we're about to get started. Just remember, you want to stay close to the pack, OK? Like safety and numbers. A lot of the drivers get aggro when we come out in full force. So let's just have a good time.
You haven't told me much about your wife. No. No. In fact, you haven't even mentioned her name. Really? I, I thought I had. No. Uh, Beth? Elizabeth, actually. Um, but you know, her name was Beth. Would you like to talk about her? Not really. People deal with the loss of a loved one in a lot of ways. There's no one path. At least tell me how you've been dealing with it. I'm just trying to put it past me. Just looking at what is directly in front of me and try not to focus too much on it. You know, distract myself with work or idle, whatever. Well, a lot of people want to triage their feelings at first. It's normal to compartmentalize them someplace so that you can get by in the moment. But at some point, everyone has to deal with those feelings. Or what? Or you're miserable. Or you make everyone around you miserable. Or you do something you might regret later. I'm just trying to move on to whatever the next part of my life is going to be. And what does moving on look like to you? I don't know. I had a wife, and now I don't. And there's nothing I can do about that. No, there's not. But there's a lot you can do to accept that reality without being destroyed by it. You're never going to be OK with what happened. But it can't be a fresh wound every time you think about it. How do I do that? It's different for everyone. I mean, some people need to feel that what happened wasn't a random act, but a part of something bigger, a greater plan. I'm not exactly religious. Others need to forgive someone, whether that's themselves or even the person who's gone. Some people need to hold someone responsible, like a victim of a violent crime going to a parole hearing, that sort of thing. Knowing someone has been held responsible can be helpful for them. You mean someone to blame. He's a lawyer at a pretty big firm. Bar of Vincent Parks and Smith. Weird, right? We'll be able to file a lawsuit with the court in a couple of days. Insurance company will want to settle, but... I'm not suing anybody. Why not? Honestly, look at yourself. I have insurance. He has insurance. It was a car accident. Tom, let me help. My, my meds are starting to kick in, so I'm going to try to get some sleep, OK? I thought Mr. Rourke was supposed to be immortal, right? I think so. I know he had a bunch of uh, ghost friends and like a dead girlfriend that he talked to a bunch. I think even the devil showed up in one episode or something. <laughs> Remember when they uh, replaced Tattoo with Mr. Belvedere? <laughs> no. Yeah. God, what a weird show. It's kind of dark for an island getaway. Sure. Look at this guy. How's it going? Getting back to the swing of things? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Making some changes. Wasn't there like a, a little guy that did a... Uh, it was a frog. Did a... Flips, right. I like that thing. <laughs> you can have it if you want it. No, thanks. I'm all right. So 
I was thinking I'd like to have you and Rami do a couple of presentations. Oh, yeah? I think it might be good for some of the newer guys to see what you two do to keep clients happy. I spoke with Rami already. He's going to do something on getting time-sensitive material to clients. Sure. And I thought you could do something on the cost side. You know, package buying, shipping routes, a lot of the stuff you were doing before you left. Uh, you okay? Good. That's great. And I don't want to put too much pressure on this, but I've narrowed the promotion down to you two guys. Really? Yeah. And this presentation is, you know... Yeah. Rami's really worked hard. He's been giving me the full court press. Truth be told, I don't know that he's the guy. And I wanted you to have an opportunity to get full consideration. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I don't really want any special treatment because... No, no, I know. Just kill this presentation, huh? I will. Won't let you down. Is it weird that I think I made a new friend recently? No, it's not that weird to make new friends. It's just been a long time since I've made a friend. Not really sure I still know how. Well, what's to know? Well, normally I'm not a big fan of talking to people. The whole thing feels very elementary school to me. You've been through a big change in your life. You've been distant from other people for a while. It's good to meet new people. I guess so. How'd you two meet? Just a guy I've been talking to on the train. Does that thing make your hair look funny? No. Why does my hair look funny? I don't know what your hair looks like normally. Does it normally look like that? Yeah, probably. And then it's fine. How do you get around on the train without a bike? I walk. Really? Yeah. And the mass transit here is pretty bad. I can barely do it with a bike. No, it's not that bad. Plus, I mean, I'd, I'd feel silly riding a bike. You'd rather walk for miles than feel silly? Look, walking's good for you. And I don't want my hair to look funny. Huh. <laughs> but you said my hair didn't look funny. No, no, no. I said I didn't know what your hair looked like normally. Two different things. So what's the deal with you? Why the bike? What do you mean? Well, you don't really strike me as the environmental hippie type. I was in a car accident not too long ago. And it was pretty bad. Didn't really feel like getting back in a car, so I got a bike. I'm sorry. No, it's... What about you? What's your story? <laughs> no, man, your story's much better. Hmm. Try me. Can't drive. You never learned how? No, no, I know how to drive. I just can't do it responsibly. If they took away my license and forced me to ride this thing. What'd you do? Ah, no. Just, just got too many parking tickets. That's a lot of tickets? Yeah, yeah, it was. Why didn't you tell me a little more about Beth? I don't really know what to say. Um, she was smart. She was very smart, actually. Certainly smarter than I am. Are you married? Yes. Happily? I make it a point not to talk about my personal life with patients. Right. We were happy. At least I think we were. I mean, I was happy. 
We got married pretty young. Uh, she got pregnant when we were still in school, so I dropped out and got a job, and then we got married. You have children? No. Um, she had a miscarriage not long after the wedding. That must have been hard. Yeah, yeah, it was. We got married to start a family, and that didn't happen. But she went back to school. I went back to work. She went on to graduate school. She got two degrees, and then went on to law school. She was smart. She was a lawyer? Yeah. She landed a pretty great job with a fancy law firm, O'Brien, Baxter, and Williams. Oh, wow. You know it? Yeah, I've heard of it, actually. Did any of that bother you? What? That you didn't finish school, that you had to work while she did, that she went on to be a lawyer? No. I hated school. It wasn't for me. And I was proud of her. And I was happy to do whatever I thought would make her happy. We gotta go. We're gonna be late. No, I'm almost done. It's just like, I know I'm gonna get sat next to some dummy tonight who's only interested in TV shows about other dummies. Mm -hmm. I can just feel it. I know how you feel about dummies, but this is for charity. We can be miserable together. That's what marriage is all about, right? I have to take this. It'll just be a minute. Hi. Hold on. When did you get a... Uh, I'll just be one second. This isn't a good time. But you got it pretty together. You got a job. You wear a suit. You married? No. You? Yeah. How's it going? That's all right, I guess. It's all right, I guess? Is that what it says on the anniversary card you gave me? Uh, it's not going as well as I would have hoped. What's the problem? I'm an asshole. And? And it's marriage. And she didn't know I was an asshole. So she's not that bright. That's nice. Thank you. Look, I don't know. We Things get old. We didn't know each other that well going into it. I fucked up a number of times. And now I'm, we're working it out. Good luck with that. Piggyback your shipments. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Piggyback your shipments. The closer you can fly materials to the site, the faster and cheaper it'll be for your clients. Now, getting components for a complex manufacturing process on time and close to the site, that's a bit of an art form unto itself. But if you can time multiple shipments to multiple clients flying on the same flight to the same hub and delivery route, they'll share the expense and not know it. Their cost goes down, it's on time, and they think you're a genius. <laughs> Hey, I think I really kicked ass on that presentation. Yeah, man, you were good. Yeah, I've been doing some research on the optimum frequency of jokes in a corporate presentation. How's your presentation going? Good, good. I, uh, I'm not gonna have any pig analogies or anything, but it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that stuff comes from. It just sort of occurs to me. I took a workshop on Photoshop at a community college. I think it really paid off. Oh, good for you, man. Yeah. You ready to go? Definitely gonna be late now. I don't wanna go. What? I'm not feeling well, and I would like for you to go without me, please. Look, 
I really need you to go, okay? I told George we were both gonna go. Oh, well, God forbid we let George down. But what's your problem with George? I thought you liked him. Well, I'm not going. Yeah, you are. I said we're going and we're going. <laughs> I'm not going to George's stupid fucking charity thing. What is happening right now? Nothing. Why were you using a different cell phone? What? You were using a different cell phone just now. It's a phone. It's for work. You never told me that. Yes, I did. You want to go to the thing? Let's go to the fucking thing. Come on. Can I get a beer? How long have you been married? I told you we're not going to talk about my personal life. Right. I mean, don't some of your patients find it unsettling that you know so much about them and they don't know anything about you? Do you? Yeah. Why? Well, for all intents and purposes, you're a stranger. I mean, no one knows all this stuff about me. Didn't you just befriend a stranger on a train? Yeah, and that's just a guy I shoot the shit with on a way to work. I'm not gonna talk to him about my dead wife. Maybe you should. Well, I'm not going to. Come on, how long have you been married? This is not that hard. Ten years. That's great. What's the average, like eight? Something like that. How long were you and Beth married? Eight years. Did your husband cheat on you? That's totally inappropriate. Well, would you know it if he did? Yes, I'd like to think that I would. Did Beth cheat on you? Yeah. Yeah, she did. Tom, listen, I'm sorry, but Beth was having an affair. What? She told you that? It wasn't my place to tell you. She was my friend. I'm sorry. I really am. Well, for how long? I think I've been going on for some time. Jesus, I loved her. We, we, had a, we had a whole life together. I know. She told me that she was ending it. She felt terrible. She really did. She loved you, too. <laughs> did she say who? No, she wouldn't tell me. 
She just said it was someone that she had known for a while. Oh, fuck. Tom, do you remember Beth going to Rosemont, someplace up north? Yeah, I guess uh, she had a client up there or something. Belming Industries. I brought her that client. OK. That's where she would go to meet him. She would fake a business trip up there and go see him. C come on, Mike, why are you telling me this? The guy who hit you and Beth, Clark, remember I told you that he worked for Bar Vincent Parks and Smith? Yeah. Well, BVPNS does a lot of work for Belming Industries. Clark's firm had the same client. Wait, you're telling me that Beth knew him? There's no such thing as a coincidence. Clark is the guy. OK, even if he was the guy that she was with, that doesn't prove anything. Well, if he's not going to jail, we can sue the shit out of him. He has to be held accountable. I know. basically have to track how many units of each component they need for all the products they manufacture. Then you have to time the arrival at the exact right time in the manufacturing process to maximize efficiency. That sounds as boring as all hell. And what I do is really boring. Sure. I mean, it's not fun. Do you go to school for that? I mean, do people go to school to learn how to waste their lives moving theoretical objects across columns of arbitrary numbers? Yeah, I think they probably do. Not me. I just needed a job. What do you do? I'm a lawyer. Corporate law. I make sure people with insane amounts of money can make more money without anybody knowing about it. Sounds like fun. It is not. It's soul crushing, but it's a living. I bet it is. Hey, come on in. Hey, how's it going? Good. How's the presentation coming? Good. Yeah? What do you got so far? Want me to take a look? Bounce some ideas off me? <laughs> uh, right now, it's still preliminary. Um, still getting the numbers in and whatnot. Oh. Well, you know it's next week. I don't think I can push it. You sure you're going to be ready by then? Yeah, no, it'll, it'll be fine. You know, I'm getting some research in later today, and then I'm just going to bang it out. OK, if you say so. Just let me know if you need some help or feedback or something. I will. Thanks, George. Yeah. Hey, you got a little stain or something on your shirt there. Thanks. Bye, honey. Love you. My airbag went off during the accident. I've heard a lot of people complain about, you know, airbags being too powerful. A lot of broken noses after fender benders. Seems like a small price to pay. Yeah, I guess so. Best airbag didn't go off. Some cars don't have passenger side airbags. Was it an older car? No, it was only a couple years old. It had a passenger airbag. It just didn't go off. Something was wrong with it. The next stop will be Spring Street.
Maya. Hey, uh, can you do me a favor? Yeah, what's up? Can you find out a little more about this guy, Clark? Sure. Why? Um, you're right. It can't be a coincidence. I just want to know if this is the guy. I thought you didn't want to sue anyone. Let's just find out a little more about him and we can go from there, okay? Like what? Whatever you can find. Who he is, where does he go, what does he do? Is he married? Who his wife is? I just want to get a better idea of the guy. I don't know, maybe his wife should know about him. I, don't know, I just need something to do. I'm bored out of my mind. Get a cat. I hate cats. Can you just see what you can find out, please? Okay, yeah, I will. Thanks. Thanks, I'm good. This is my train. I'm heading home. What are you doing here? We're just going home. I leave work at different times every day, but I'm always on this train. I take this train every single night. You tell me you're on this train every single night, and I haven't seen you once. Yeah, how is that possible? I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more about your car accident. I was pretty mad uh, when I left the house that day. I mean, we both were. Why? What were you angry about? We had just been in an argument. What about? We were supposed to go to this charity event that my boss throws every year, and she didn't want to go. So why did you? Because it was work. Because I was mad. I mean, we were getting ready to go, and she was acting weird about something, and then suddenly she didn't want to go. And I don't know why. What happened next? We got in my car. I made us take my car. Why your car? Why would that matter? She hated my car. It embarrassed her. I know it's childish. I've never cared about cars. You know, cheap, reliable, that's fine. But she had to have something expensive. Just another reason to fight, I guess. I knew that the airbag light had been going off for a while, the passenger airbag. And, you know, I was meaning to fix it, but, you know, I couldn't get it to the mechanic until Monday, and I, I just wasn't thinking or I was mad. You couldn't have known you were going to be in a car accident. No, but if I hadn't have done that, she'd be alive right now. You didn't know what was going to happen. You were angry, and you were in an accident. 
It's unfortunate, but those are two different things. Like I know you've been having a hard time. And after finding out about Beth's affair, I'm sure you've been dealing with a few things. Guilt, betrayal. But you loved her, right? Yeah, I did. That's important. And just because Beth was unfaithful, it doesn't mean that she didn't love you. Sometimes people get lost. This was a car accident, and it was terrible. But it wasn't your fault. I made us go. She didn't want to, and for some reason, I made us go. Let's take my car. No, I want to drive. Come on, just get in. I don't want to take your car. Oh my God, will you fucking please just stop? Just stop arguing? Can we go? Morning. Morning. Oh, hey, are you ready? You want me to help you set up? S set up what? Your presentation. It starts in an hour. Uh, right. No, I'm good. Thanks. Um, uh, sorry, it's going to be a, a couple seconds here. If you want to take one of those, you can. <clears throat> uh, saving your clients money. Everybody likes that, right? Uh, you like that, and they like that. It's what everybody wants. They want to save money on shipping, and they want discounts on products and parts. Um, but shipping is expensive, because <clears throat> China is far away, and that's what makes the shipping so expensive. China is very far away, actually. Uh, China. They make everything. There's not much we can do about that. But your clients are probably saving money on uh, cheap labor, right? So if they wanted to continue to save money, they could outsource uh, uh, some of the manufacturing process, or uh, they could invest in robots. Uh, oh, question. Are you suggesting we tell our clients that if they want cheaper shipping, they should fire more people and buy robots? Yes, and hire more foreign workers. Any other questions? Great, thank you. I've been thinking about buying a car, maybe. Really? That's kind of a big step for you, right? Yeah. I've been hanging on to this insurance money, and I think it's about time. Wow. So you are going to make me have to find someone else to talk to on this thing. It's going to happen to your helmet. You can borrow it. I don't think I'm going to stop taking the train. It's kind of grown on me. It'd be nice to have a car to drive every once in a while, though. That's great, man. Good for you. Thanks. Think you want to go with me? What, to buy a car? I don't really have anyone else to go with, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, man, I can do that. Man, I don't want to put you on the spot. You don't have to. I know it's probably kind of weird. 
No. I mean, it is super weird, but... <laughs> no, I'm happy to go. Thanks. Take this. Can we just walk? No, no, it's way too far away. It'd take forever. Come on, this will be fun. Yeah, fun for you. That's what I mean. This will be fun for me. This all just an elaborate plan to get rid of your weird, stupid helmet? Yep. All right, hang on. Just take it easy. All right, all right, quit moving. Uh, just, oh, God. OK. Be careful. Oh, boy. Oh, this feels great. Oh, man. Yeah, this is much better than walking. This is great. Yeah. Oh, All right. God. All right. Okay. All right. That's it. That's it. God. That was fun, right? No. Here. Hi there. Anything I can help you two with today? Yeah. Uh, I think I want to buy a car. What you thinking about? Four door, automatic. I got a great selection of SUVs. How about that one? That is $10,999. Yeah, I was hoping to pay closer to nine. Yeah, these are pretty aggressively priced as it is. They're all certified pre-owned. I mean, I can show you. It's the same car on your website, right? Oh. That is the right place. Yeah, that's us. Let's see. That is what the same car is going for around town. Huh. So. Yeah, I was thinking like nine. You want to test drive it or something? I think I'm good. He's decisive. All right. Come on. That was easy. She is all yours. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Hey, hey, how's it going? How you feeling, okay? Good. Good, I'm glad. Yeah. Listen, Tom, do you um, think maybe you came back to work a little too early after your accident? No. What do you mean? You're not the same guy. You're just not. Coming in late every day, you leave early. Okay, uh, well, the train is unpredictable. You know, it can be late and it's, it's inconsistent, but I, I think I figured it out. The past three reports you turned in were a mess. Totally wrong. They, they didn't make any sense. I had Rami redo them. Clients are complaining. What's going on? I'm having a hard time. Okay, I'm preoccupied. <laughs> it's understandable. You've been through a lot. Why don't you take some more time off? Another month or so. Okay. Um, this is not gonna happen again. I'm gonna call these guys right now and this is gonna be fine. It's not fine, I can't have it. I, I knew when you came back, it was too early. Okay, you don't understand, George. I have to work, okay? I have to come here every day. Tom, I'm sorry. Listen, take a vacation or something. See a shrink. I'm seeing a shrink. See another one. Look, call me in a month, and we'll see where we're at, all right? Yeah.
Hello. Why aren't you at work? Um, I took a leave of absence. I thought you just took one. Uh, I did. What happened? Why are you taking another leave of absence? I don't know. They told me to take some more time off. Why? What did you do? Nothing. Well, you had a job and now you don't. That doesn't happen by itself. I don't know. I need to take care of some things, and so they gave me some more time off. What's really happening here, Tom? What are you up to? What are you talking about? You got me snooping around this guy's life. You want to know his home address. You want to know stuff about his wife. I thought we were prepping for a lawsuit. We are. Well, this is not how I normally prepare to sue someone. I'm fine, OK? I'm sad. My wife is dead, and I'm sad. I'm not crazy. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just sad. I'm grieving. Are you going to tell me how to grieve now? I'm sorry. I'm just trying to help. And I'm sad, too. I know you are. And I seem to be the only one to give a shit about you right about now. Beth would want someone to look after you. Maybe... Maybe you should talk to someone. You mean like a shrink? Yeah, like a shrink. I'll think about it. How are you feeling about things? Good. Things are, you know, okay. All right. Would you like to talk about anything today? Yeah. That's refreshing. What's on your mind? You. We've been over this. I know. I was thinking about what you said. And just because Beth was cheating on me doesn't mean that she didn't love me. And that's probably right. But it also doesn't mean that she necessarily wanted to be with me either. That could be true. I think it is. So if you lose the person that doesn't want to be with you, regardless of how it happens, don't you still deserve to be with someone who wants to be with you? Yes, I think that you do. I think so, too. I'm still not sure what we're talking about right now. I know. drink after work tonight? On a Wednesday? I just got this promotion, and uh, I want to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, promotion? That's great. Congratulations. Thanks. It's down to me and this other guy. We had to uh, give this big presentation to audition for it. Well, sounds like it went pretty well. Yeah, I think it did. Yeah, man, let's get a drink. Let's celebrate. Right. Your wife won't mind? No. No, I doubt she'll even notice I'm not there. All right. So I'll meet you here at like 8 or 8.15 or something? Yeah, no, that All sounds right. great, man. Sure. See you then. See you then. All right, man. Our next stop will be Market Street. Metro Center bound train. Now you're gonna make me ride your handlebars again? No, I actually brought my car. There's a great bar around the corner here. Nice.
You're not using this thing much, are you? No, no, not much. I leave it at the office a lot, you know, in case I'm gonna work late or something. Here we go. It's Wednesday, right? To Wednesday. Uh, no. To your promotion. Thanks. Guess worst comes to worst, we can always take the train home. Or we can pull out my bike, make you ride the handlebars again. <laughs> you know you can get arrested for riding a bike drunk. Really? That's dumb. I'd fall off and hurt myself. It's a victimless crime. Yeah, except you'd throw me in oncoming traffic. Cause a 17 car pile up. <laughs> that would be bad. He seems to be making progress. I think he's starting to find closure with his wife, but there's some pain there. Finding out after she died that she had been cheating on him was a blow, I'm sure, but there's something else going on, something he's not ready to talk about. Our last session was strange. I don't know. It's, it's, not, it's not her fault. I mean, how long do marriages last these days anyway? What, eight years? Something like that. So she works a lot. I work a lot. I don't really think she likes me very much anymore. Did some things I shouldn't have, and now I'm paying for it. But you love her, right? Yeah. You wouldn't want to lose her. Right. Losing someone is hard. Well, there's a story there. What happened? Why, she didn't want to sit on your handlebars? She died. Oh. Man, I... I'm sorry. God, I am such an asshole, man. I'm... I'm... It's okay, you couldn't have known. No, but still, it's not... I'm... I'm sorry. It was hard, you know, it was sudden. Didn't see it coming. That sounds, that's awful. Hey, you doing okay? Yeah. It was hard at first, but I think I'm turning the corner. Yeah, man, yeah. But you got a promotion, you know, so things are you know, looking up. Yeah, they are. Cheers. You ready for another one? Yeah, yeah, sure. Two more, please. Go. Oh, uh, how much do I owe you? Don't worry about it. You get the next one. Cheers. Hey, honey. Yeah, I'm gonna have to work late. Shit, man, I fucked up. It's my fault. The whole thing. Did something terrible. I couldn't have been that bad. Cause you don't know. You don't know what I did.
Hey, you all right? Wasted. The fuck, I get so wasted. Let's get you out of here before your wife starts to worry. She ain't gonna worry. Aaron Clark. Aaron Clark, I, uh, there's been an accident. I need you. Uh, I, I'm in trouble. I need you to get down here right now. No, I need you to get down here right now. Look, I, I'm in trouble. I'm in
Yeah, this is Tom. I can't get to the phone right now, but if you'll leave a message, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. Tom, hey, uh, give me a call when you get this. It's important. Clark's lawyer finally started cooperating some. Elming was never his client. And I checked three of the dates Beth was in Rosemont. He wasn't there. Doesn't look like they know each other. I think we got it wrong. Where is your friend? Sorry? Your friend. You two always travel together. I don't know. He's probably at home, I guess. a DUI two years ago. He's done pretty well for himself. Two cars paid off, a reasonably sized mortgage. His wife's a therapist. Like a doctor? Yeah, she's a psychiatrist. Private practice or a hospital? I don't know. Why do you want to know about his wife? No reason. George, please stop calling me. I can't do it anymore. He's still my husband, and he's still your friend. It's not right. And I still love him, or at least I'm going to try this time. Goodbye, George. I'm sorry.